All right. Let's get it on the way. All right, you know what? If you would have told me that I would enjoy Puss in Boots 2, I would never have believed you. So let's break down what I liked, what I didn't like, and just everything as a whole. First, let's talk about the story. So in this, Puss in Boots is in his very last life as we see montages of how he got to this point and how he's been so risky and wasting all of his basically on eight of his nine lives so after being told by the local town doctor to retire or else he is forced to sack up with an old lady but before that he runs into death who is one of the coolest characters i've ever seen oh my god he's so god He's the personification of death in this universe. In the Shrek universe is a wolf, which is interesting. Does that mean King Harold and Fairy Godmother saw? And I think Prince Charming and Rumpel, did they all end up seeing this guy when they died? Is he a dog or does he change forms? These are questions that I want to be discovered in the next Shrek movie. But going back to the story, so Puss is retired and he shacks up with the old lady there in the old lady's house. He meets a cute, adorable little dog named Pero. And Pero has a very sad backstory, but I love his optimism and his look on life. You see, he was a puppy who, how do I say this in the nicest way? Tied up in a sack and drowned by the river. And you're living in a van down by the river. And, un well, fortunately for him, he's so optimistic. He saw this as a game. I love that little dog. Hope nothing bad happens to him. Anywho, Puss gets reunited with Kitty Softpaws from the last movie. And they have to come in contact with Goldilocks and the three bears and apparently in this movie Goldilocks and the three bears are basically Mission Impossible or a crime boss fan like crime organization family apparently she was adopted by the bears and she's voiced by Florence Pugh you know Florence Pugh from Don't Worry Darling but more importantly she's Black Widow. Kid Bishop. <laughs> ah. They're they're on the hunt to steal a map to Wishing Star, which grants one wish. Puss wants to use it in order to regain his lives back, and hey, oh Goldilocks God. wants to That's use crazy. it in order to see her real parent. Map happens to be in Little Jack Horner's possession. And might I add, I'm so glad that little Jack Horner was not voiced by James Corden because good lord, that's a character that literally looks like it's designed to be played by James Corden. But no, it's John Mulaney, aka Spider-Ham, so we're good. What I like about little Jack Horner is his bag of magical items. It's kind of like Deadpool's magic satchel or like any Looney Tunes cartoon where they just grab whatever items they need out of their pockets. Like one instance, he has special food that makes him bigger. Another instance, he has a Phoenix that he uses as a flamethrower. And another instance, he has Jiminy Cricket, which is really interesting. So they steal the map from the little Jack Horner. And now we have three groups on the search for the wishing star, which is interesting because they all want it for selfish reasons. Like nobody wants it for like good reasons. 
I mean, I guess you can argue Goldie, but she just wants to see her parents, but that's not taking account of the family that she grew with the three bears. So, along the way, they have to go through this perilous journey into this forest. When they touch the map, the map, whoever touches the map, the obstacle changes. And I thought that was pretty cool, especially when, you t when Pero touches it. It's just like goofball like sunshine and rainbows and it, there's this one point where they just have to walk through a pocket full of posies i wish they were all like nursery rhymes and like schoolyard like phrases that you would sing as a child but it was nice eventually they do get to the wishing star and they all fight over the wish and puss comes face to face with death multiple times throughout the run and death every time he just comes in with stone cold box i mean this this dude is ice cold cold blooded don't be intimidated squidward try to imagine him in his underwear oh no he's hot eventually puss realizes that what he was searching for all along was right in front of him also it's revealed that Puss and Kitty were supposed to get married, but the ironic part is neither of them showed up for their own wedding, which was funny because they can't trust each other. Oh, Kitty thinks it's because she couldn't compete with Pussy with Boots' lifestyle and his ego, and Puss didn't feel worthy of showing up for her, his, his own wedding. Also, he's addicted to his lifestyle too, so... A little column A, column B. Ultimately, he does the right thing and teams up with everybody, defeats little Jack Horner, and relinquishes the wish. So that way, nobody gets the wish. And that's how it ends with the three of them becoming a family and going off their, on their way to uh, reunite with Shrek and the gang. So. That's the story. Let's move on to the animation. The animation was really dope. The Spider-Verse inspired drop frames animation is beautiful. And I love the character designs in this movie. They just look so different than the realistic take from the previous Shrek movies. And I hope that's how all the human characters are gonna look from now on. I can't wait to see what Puss, Donkey, Shrek, and all the other ones look like in this new art style, especially Fiona. Wow, Fiona still look great. Uh, I like how everybody looks more like a painting or sketch, like straight out of a storybook, instead of like the, the whole realistic, photorealistic thing. I think DreamWorks is going through a really good period if this is the way they're going when it comes to stylization. Ultimately, this was a fun movie. I did not expect to have great action scenes and killer animation and a heartwarming story about like finding the meaning of your purpose of your life outside of like who you were expected to be. Overall, I'll give this movie like 10 out of 10. I, I, I can't think of anything wrong with it. It was really funny. Uh, if you haven't seen it, my only gripe is that it came out during the worst possible time, which is December, and it also has to compete with Christmas and Avatar. I wish it would have came out like a little later, like maybe February and March. That way it had some time to breathe, but yeah, that was my only gripe. Ultimately, do you agree or disagree? Let me know. Uh, right down in the comment section. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know the next time we upload. And thanks for watching.